Hi, my name is Pastor Randy Jones, and this is my wife Nancy, and this is our 7,000th take. No, I'm just teasing. Just we about. have a lot of fun doing this production, and I hope it's a blessing to you. I hope that you're encouraged by it. Uh, this is The Bridge, and we want to welcome you to the broadcast. I've asked Nancy if she would greet you, share a little bit about the ministry that continues to grow and expand, read a little scripture with you. I'm going to pray, and then we're going to be in the book of Philemon. So you can grab your Bible. If you have to go to the index, uh, you might need to do that. It's just a one-chapter book, but it's part of the three uh, books that make up the prison epistles. So greetings, Nance. Hi. Welcome. Happy Thanksgiving. We're in Chicago area, uh, up in M Mundelein, Illinois. Did you already say that? Good, good. <laughs> And we are here, we celebrated our grandson's birthday, our fourth grandson, and we are getting ready for Thanksgiving. And 25 time. pound turkey, and we got about eight people here. <laughs> Six adults, so <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, things are shutting down again, so this is going to be a different Thanksgiving for all of us in America, and um, we just need to look to the Lord, don't we? He's our, he's our hope. He sent Jesus as our hope, and so we rejoice in that. No matter what happens around us, no matter if it takes 7,000 takes on this taping, um, we're, we're doing what God wants us to do, and we have a hope and a peace and a joy within our heart. And um, so with that, I'm going to read a passage of scripture, but before I do that, I'm going to tell you that we have our website up, it's and we are on YouTube, and Aaron- Looking good. Aaron Tenney has helped us with that, and um, yes, he's doing an awesome job. And the Canegas are helping us with the, the audio portions, and so it's been really good. We're excited about what God is doing, and um, going to be looking for some new platforms as well to, to um, minister across. And we're hoping that that God is going to keep opening the doors for His Word to go forth. Right? Amen. Amen. So you can find us on on our website, The Bridge ministry online and you could also find us on youtube for the same thing and then um also wanted to let you know that you can share in the ministry with us if you'd like to give your donations are accepted through paypal and that would be the the bridge pastor randy so the bridge everything is the bridge okay mm -hmm. so um that being said i'm going to read a thanksgiving and prayer from philemon in scripture and it's appropriate for this time of year good job babe mm -hmm. So, I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers because I hear about your love for all his holy people and Amen. all your faith in the Lord Jesus. I pray that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing we share for the sake of Christ. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you brother have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people amen, amen. that's a amen. good passage Thanksgiving and prayer that's our topic today and we are thankful for you and we are thankful for the good news of Jesus Christ join with me now as we pray our family prayer together Heavenly Father we do just lift up one another right now especially during this time of uh, more shutdowns and confusion in the culture and not always knowing except through the Spirit what is truth and what is not true. And I ask, Lord, that you would just minister supernaturally to individuals that are watching this very moment, that the peace of God would come over them in a special way. And just let that happen to you, friend, right now. You know, our challenge in prayer is to receive. And just receive now as I pray. Receive from God the Holy Spirit. I'm just a, a, a vessel. I'm just a conduit. But it's the Holy Spirit that you feel. And that frustration, that heaviness, uh, that uh, darkness that's trying to attack us. Paul teaches us in Ephesians uh, to raise the shield of faith and to quench the fiery darts of the enemy. And I do that on, in prayer for my friends that are watching right now. Hallelujah. Get that shield of faith up there, Lord. We believe you're gonna rescue us. We believe you're gonna take care of us. We believe you're, you are healing our bodies. You're letting truth stand. 
You're letting the power of the gospel be radiant in our innermost being while the storm rages around us. We are with you in the boat and we are safe. Be it Noah, be it the disciples out in the water, you are with us and we're going to the other side. And for us, the other side is heaven. We thank you that Jeff Mountford is in heaven with you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you're with us. And we thank you that Keith Gifford's mom, Betty, is with you, Jesus. There's more that are going to be following, even yet this year, that will transition from this life to eternal life. Help us to prepare ourselves for our own crossing. Do that through your word today. We speak peace right now to marriages. We come against depression and we bring in the awesomeness of joy that comes from the Lord and knowing the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Strengthen the men and women that are watching right now. As the sun moves out beyond the clouds, as we see the radiance of that, let that happen supernaturally and powerfully right now for every person that's watching. Oh, how we need more of the Holy Spirit. As my son Keith wrote on his wall, let us not lag behind nor run ahead, but let us walk step and step with you, Jesus, with the assistance and help of the Holy Spirit, evidenced by us being able to pray in our known language and our heavenly language. I do so now. I pray with my mind and I pray with my spirit that you are and will continue to do supernatural things for all who are watching this broadcast right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can I hear a hearty amen? Amen. God bless you. Pick up your Bible. Let's go to Philemon together and let's begin at verse 1. I'll quickly go over the passage that Nancy read in a moment. But notice, as we look at this together, Paul a prisoner. Where is Paul? He's in prison because of his faith. Some of us feel like we're in prison right now because we're not able to travel to be with family and to sit around a Thanksgiving table and to be thankful and grateful for provision and health in our bodies. I just trust that you would realize that with the Lord we are free. And here in America we are free. The government's going to get itself straightened out, I believe. And I have confidence in the Lord. Listen to the Holy Spirit and listen to the Word of God. Be led by Him. And notice that the reason that Paul is in prison is because of Christ Jesus. And of course his support team, Timothy, our brother, Paul had a special relationship with lots of people, but it seems Timothy was one that really was a, a cohort with him, a, a friend of the ministry, somebody that he could learn and grow and, and develop with. You see Paul's life when he writes Galatians, and then when he finishes writing to Timothy and Titus, the maturity of the couple of decades of, of him in his ministry and the things that God had called him to, how he matured. And I, I hope that you see that what we're going through personally in our churches, in America and around the world, that we see that this is part of God's plan for the maturation of our spiritual development. And he goes on and says to Philemon, our dear friend and fellow worker. So this is a real individual. So it's as if God is speaking and put your name in there where Philemon's name is. We are a friend and a fellow worker of the ministries that God has brought into our place to support, pray for, and do the work that needs to be done. And also to Aphia, our sister, and Acrippus, our fellow soldier, and to the church that meets in your home. Of course, the first century church, there was meetings in the homes, and it appears that that's happening again today. Many, many hundreds of you are having church in your home while you're watching this broadcast. And I trust that you will be blessed by this video and that it'll encourage you to be connected and yet safe in the confides of your home. Think with me, if you will, as we look at the passage here, because now it goes into the thanksgiving and prayer. This is Paul 
giving thanksgiving, which is being grateful and thankful, and also praying for those that he's ministering to. Just as Nancy and I pray for each of you, we ask the Holy Spirit to show us your faces, bring your names to our minds, and then we pray what we know about you. So we pray specifically, but then we also pray with our spirit. And that's where I use my heavenly language to talk to God with the help and assistance of the Holy Spirit, who is God and knows all things. And here's what he says in verse 4. I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayers, because I hear about your love for all his holy people and your faith in the Lord Jesus. I pray that your partnership with us in the faith may be effective in deepening your understanding of every good thing we share for Christ's sake. Your love has given me great joy and encouragement because you brothers have refreshed the hearts of the Lord's people. Our hearts are being refreshed and are being built up through reading of the word and through being thankful. I'm thankful you're watching this broadcast right now. I'm thankful that you love Jesus. And if you don't know him real well, Get in the Word and invite Him through asking Him to come into every part of your life and to interact with you. Notice as He's talking about thanksgiving, it's hard to be angry when you say grateful things. Frustration lifts when we say, I'm thankful for my spouse. I'm thankful for my grown children. I'm thankful for my grandchildren. Even when things aren't always perfect, we still are thankful that God is working all things together in order to bring about his will, plan, and purpose for our lives and for the lives of those that are in our, in our charge, in our families, people in and around us. Growing up, before we left the house in the mornings to go to school, we always made a circle of prayer. My two brothers, sister, Myself, uh, my mom always, sometimes my dad, if he hadn't already gone to work. But I remember specifically my mom would pray that we would have the favor of the Lord with our teachers and our classmates. And, you know, God granted that wonderful prayer. And I'm thankful for my mom who's in heaven. And her prayers are answered because one by one our family has come to the Lord. And it was through her heavy depression and my sister's sickness many years ago that brought salvation to the Jones family. And I hope that you see some of you are going through a great challenge. Do what my folks did. Go to church. Ask for prayer. Seek the Lord. Turn to God. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord. And what did he say in his word he would do? He would lift you up and he wants to do that. He'll do that for you right now in your living room. Participate with me. Participate in worshiping. Participate in prayer. Participate in the word. Participate in God's peace and power that comes to us. And notice, he says in verse 7, Your love has given me great joy. I hope you feel the love of Jesus because it's given me joy. I have to turn off the television and the news and the cycles, even on my phone. I have to unsubscribe to some channels that are just harassing us with information and cast our cares on the Lord. I'm not saying don't know what's going on, but I am saying bring balance. You can't listen to 40 hours a week of news and, and just have four minutes of prayer. See, that's out of balance. But if we... Pray more, seek God more, read the word, fellowship with believers, get together with our families, turn off our devices for a season during the day, and then let the Holy Spirit come and fill us up. We'll have the joy that verse 7 talks about here. And notice there's, there's a refreshing. I'm praying for a refreshing for you right now. Receive it. Receive that wave of refreshment in your spirit. Don't let your heart be parched. Don't let your life be challenged to the point of collapse. And notice the reason that he's thankful. Look at it with me here in verse 8. Therefore, 
although in Christ I could be bold and order you to do what you ought to do, yet I appear and prefer to appeal to you on the basis of love. I'm asking you, join with us in prayer and work with us, roll up your sleeves and let's touch our world for Jesus. When you give of your time, of your prayer, and of your finances, God then hears and answers your prayer. He then gives you more time through organizing and answering prayer. And then he can trust you because you're mature. And then he'll give you the resources necessary to carry out the work that needs to be carried out. He says in verse 10, I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, who became my son while I was in chains. So it's in Paul's difficulty that Onesimus comes to faith, who was really a runaway slave, who became my son while I was in chains. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he has become useful both to you and to me. He probably had stolen from the people in that town, and now he's come to faith and he's being reconciled, has been reconciled, and Paul's spirit bears witness to that, and he's now standing up for the transformation that's happened in Onesimus' life. Verse 12, I'm sending him, who is my very heart, back to you. I would have liked to keep him with me so that he could take your place in helping me while I am in chains for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, and so that any favor you do would not seem forced would but would be voluntary we should never force people to the altar i've seen that happen people dr dr trying to drag somebody that don't do that that if it's not a free will it won't stick but if we pray and let the convicting power of the holy spirit do his work he will we shouldn't be the holy spirit we shouldn't remove people from our midst because they're stumbling as long as they keep getting back up, let's be gracious to them. Let's love them. Let's help them just as somebody helped us. Sometimes in ministry, I remember getting somewhat in the flesh challenged by the repetitiveness of failure of someone else that I was trying to disciple or get to grow in the Lord. And sometimes when I wanted to throw up my hands, the Lord would re remind me of the people that took time in my life. He would remind me of the people that took time for my mom and dad, for my brothers, for my family. He would remind us of that. And so notice in this passage here, he wants them to come voluntarily. Verse 15, perhaps the reason he was separated from you for a little while was that you might have him back forever. So there's a time to go to Teen Challenge to go to a never alone ministry or go to a recovery, a post recovery place. There's a time for somebody to help us for a short season. But notice in verse 16, no longer as a slave, but better than a slave as a dear brother. He is very dear to me, but even dearer to you, both as a fellow man and as a brother in the Lord. So if you consider me a partner, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has done you any wrong or owes you anything, charge it to me. Wow, talk about transformation. Paul sees it and is so convinced of it that he's willing to help alleviate some of the debts or some of the things that he had stolen and he was willing to help rest, make restitution. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will pay it back, not to mention that you owe me your very self. So he was wanting them to willfully join in but he's also putting some truth onto that. And I, I would hope that we would, we would allow that to occur, that uh, we would let forgiveness come to us and then give forgiveness to others. I've lost tens of thousands of dollars of people who were a part of the Never Alone ministry that never paid their bills at all. God will make sense of all that. But God knows what he's doing, and I trust his ability. Even when we had things stolen at, at the church, we didn't curse the people who stole them. We prayed for them. 
and so often they were returned. We're right now in the middle of someone who stole from us. They're bringing back the things that they stole. Because we pray, because we believe God does the restoration. And notice that he says in verse 21, Confident of your obedience, I write to you knowing that you will do even more than I ask. And one thing more, prepare a guest room for me because I hope to be restored to you in answer to your prayers. Paul was planning on going to see Philemon. He was wanting to have Onesimus go back and be restored to them. They knew him. He had done them wrong, but now grace was being bestowed upon him. Now restoration was occurring. I pray that for our country. I pray that for our states. I pray that for our cities and our churches and our marriages and our homes. And I pray that for you. Forgive others as you have been forgiven. Think of that stumbling area in your life that's you get victory over it and you go a season and then you get challenged again by it. Think of that area and then apply some grace and mercy to others that you're wanting to just write off. <laughs> that's the natural man and that's not of the Lord. Build up the spirit man that says, I forgive you. And rest restitution is appropriate. Making things right, paying up just as Matthew did or just as Zacchaeus did and others, they made things right even though they were tax collectors. God wants us to make restitution, make things right, and don't leave things unattended. Go to the person if you can't pay them and tell them, I can't pay you. What can arrangements can be made? And the Lord will show you. He'll guide you. He'll direct your path. And notice that he's confident, he's confident in Onesimus's obedience. Be confident in the Jesus that's in your spouse. Be confident in the Jesus that's in your children. Now, if they don't know Jesus, pray for their salvation. That's appropriate, but take the right tact. It's not when we try to play the Holy Spirit and, and remind them of their sins and make them feel bad. That just makes them angry. And typically what happens when we put the light of what's wrong with that person so bright on them, rather than them melting in forgiveness, often what happens is they say, you want to see bad? I'll show you bad. And they just become more angry and more against what they should be doing. So we can't play the part of the Holy Spirit. The best way we can model it is by us letting ourselves be humble. When was the last time you wept over your lost friend? When was the last time you wept over the spouse that you have? When was the last time you stayed in, up into the wee hours of the night praying for your child or your grandchild, seeking God? You know, sometimes when sleep doesn't come, it's God saying, it's time. Everybody else is asleep. Everybody else is occupied. Nobody's gonna call now. You don't have to be on your device. Now's the time to pray seek the Lord. I saw that in my dad and my mom's lives. That's when I was really ministered to as a young boy, watching my father hold his hand up in church, talking to God in prayer with tears in his eyes. And I knew my dad well enough. Sorry, I didn't mean to point my finger at you. But I knew my father well enough that he was an honest person. And if he said it, he meant it. And if he said he loved you, he loved you. If he said time to go to bed, it was time to go to bed. He didn't negotiate that. He did as he instructed and it was out of a heart of love. I hope that you see that in your own life. Let's embrace. One of the lessons that I have learned in reflecting back over my life, I should have listened to the older people more seasoned pastors and I did quite a bit 
And that's where the success came. People like Ori Robinson and Brother uh, Cooley, great men of God that helped start Val Vista Assembly. Uh, Everett Stenhouse, Fred Cottrell, Keith Ehrman, Byron Klaus. Those are some people that helped shape my life. And I listened to them and I did what they asked of me to do. One thing that would really be helpful today is if we would listen more to those that are wanting to help us rather than saying, well, they're out of touch. They're of another time. They don't know what they're talking about. They don't understand. They do understand. They've seen the movie. They've walked where you've walked. They've done what you've done. You make less mistakes when you listen to those that have walked the path and know how to get to the top of the mountain and walk through the valley. Finally, he says in verse 23, Epaphras, my fellow prisoner in Christ Jesus, sends you greetings. So do Mark, Aristarchus, Demas, and Luke, my fellow workers. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. We're going to pray in just a moment. But notice that he emphasizes the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. See, your spirit wants to do the will of God. Sometimes our minds want to put up obstacles and the what ifs and the how comes and the whys. Well, there's maybe a time for that, and I'm not suggesting that we shouldn't challenge ourselves or scripture or good. Uh, good thoughts and, and do the hard work in preparation. I'm, I'm suggesting we should do all that. But in the final verdict, we need to listen to God, the Holy Spirit, who empowered Jesus to stay on that cross and to provide the grace and forgiveness that was needed for restoration. I'm inviting you now to pray with me and to seek the Lord together. Would you hone in on this prayer right now? Ask the Lord Jesus Christ to minister to your heart and to learn to be thankful, learn to be grateful, learn to let the Lord guide your life in everything that you do. Would you pray with me now? Heavenly Father, as we bow our heads before you, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would guide our steps and guide our lives. Help us, Lord, to minister one to another and to support people in our lives like Onesimus that had failed but then was restored. And then Paul sends him back home. As we come together with our families at Thanksgiving as best we can, either in person or through Zoom or FaceTime. Help us to love one another, forgive one another, and to pray for one another that we might be healed and to show love. Above all else, Lord, help us to show love to those that hurt us, those that speak evil of us, or those that criticize us. Help us, Lord, to overcome evil with good. Forgive us of our sins and our trespasses. And pray this prayer with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I give you my all that I might spend eternity with you. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life that I might live with you forever. In Jesus' resurrected name, I pray. Hey, God bless you. Thanks for watching The Bridge today. Uh, stay in touch with us, and I'll see you next time. God bless.